Today we will learn and visualize recursion, one of the most important and fundamental computer science concepts. Recursion is a method of solving a computational problem where the solution depends on solutions to smaller instances of the same problem. The Fibonacci sequence is a classic example of such application. The nth number in the Fibonacci sequence is the sum of the previous two numbers. Given a number n, to find the nth Fibonacci number, we need to solve the smaller instance of the problem, which is to find the nth minus 1 and the nth minus 2 Fibonacci number. A recursive program also requires terminating conditions called base cases. In the case of the Fibonacci sequence, there are two base cases, when n is 0 and when n is 1, since the first and second number in the sequence do not have two or more previous numbers. For example, the third number is the sum of the first and second number, the fourth number is the sum of the second and third number, and so on. You can also model this mathematically using recurrence relations, which is useful for proofs and for developing intuition. Here is the recurrence relation for the Fibonacci sequence. As you can see, it contains two base cases and a recursive definition. Understanding recurrence takes practice and time, so we will mainly focus on the mechanics of recursion. Here's the code for finding the nth number of a Fibonacci sequence. I've included line numbers and variables to help you follow along the visualization. You should also notice that it has a similar structure to the recurrence relation we showed earlier. Assuming we want to find the sixth number in the Fibonacci sequence, we will call it Fibonacci 5 because we're using the zero index definition. We will then add this call to the top of the call stack. Since n is 5, we skip the base cases and call Fibonacci 4 and add it to the call stack. Our recursion officially starts here. At Fibonacci 4, we call Fibonacci 3 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 3, we call Fibonacci 2 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 2, we call Fibonacci 1 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 1, we hit a base case, we return 1 and pop Fibonacci 1 off the stack. Remember that whenever we terminate the current program, we execute the next program on the top of the call stack. So at Fibonacci 2, we resume from where we left off, which is line 6. We assign 1 to prev1 and call Fibonacci 0 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 0, we hit a base case, we return 0 and pop Fibonacci 0 off the stack. Back at Fibonacci 2, we sum up prev1 and prev2 and return the result. At Fibonacci 3, we resume from line 6 and call Fibonacci 1 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 1, we hit a base case, return 1, and pop it off the stack. Back at Fibonacci 3, we sum up prev1 and prev2 and return the result. At Fibonacci 4, we resume from line 6, call Fibonacci 2 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 2, we call Fibonacci 1 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 1, we hit a base case, return 1, and pop it off. Back at Fibonacci 2, we call Fibonacci 0 and add it to the stack. At Fibonacci 0, we hit a base case, return 0, and pop it off. Back at Fibonacci 2, we sum up prev1 and prev2 and return the result. Back at Fibonacci 4, we sum up prev1 and prev2 and return the result. At Fibonacci 5, we resume from line 6 and repeat this whole procedure all over again. See if you can follow along on your own. Now that Fibonacci 5 is completed, we have our final answer, which is 5. Hopefully this visualization was able to help you gain a basic understanding of recursion. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.